Welcome to the tutorial playing back effects. So we looked a little bit at playing back effects at the start of the chapter creating basic effects part one when we looked at the shadow effect. So the two buttons that we use for playing back effects are the two that we see here. The difference is is that this plays back almost all effects um, that are bitmap based where this is a flash render and only plays back effects that are supported by the SWF format. In order to see which effects are supported by Flash, um, you can always refer to the user guide. So um, around page 815, you can see that here's the list of effects. And sometimes an effect might be supported, such as the glow, but some of its parameters may not be supported. So we see the highlight, the color scale, the blur, etc., um, all the way down to the shadow. So let's try doing a regular render. So it always takes a little bit of time to load the frames. And then if we click on the play button, you can see that the cloud is semi-transparent and that it disappears through the hole. So it's just because the render went past 60 frames that the cloud and the hole both disappear. So my scene and my project are not very large. Uh, most of the time when you are creating a project, you, you mean for it to be projected on a much larger scale. So you've probably created your project using larger dimensions. So when you start previewing, it will probably take even longer uh, than it took me to load those frames. And I only loaded something like um, 130 frames, which isn't very much either. So there's a way around this. Um, some of you might think, well, if I just change my scene settings um, temporarily and then change them back to my final render, that'll be one way. So in that way, I can preview something quite small, but then render something quite big. That is one way, but it's kind of annoying. However, there's actually a much, much better way of rendering a preview, um, and that's by going to view preview resolution, and you can actually set the resolution you'd like for your preview, so you can have it a fourth of your scene resolution, a third, a half, three quarters, or same as a scene resolution. You can also create a custom resolution by clicking on the last option at the bottom of the menu, um, and you would create a new resolution by changing the values in here, so I change this to 800, for example, the save button then uh, becomes enabled. And when you do that, you get a window that allows you to name your new custom preview resolution option. So I'm just going to cancel that. So my scene is so small that comparatively speaking, it didn't take very long to render. So if I decided to render a preview at half for a fourth, it would be even faster than that. So we can try that out. I'll go to a half. And uh, yes, I'll re-render those frames. And see now that was super fast, but the preview also appears smaller. So now if we try doing a flash render, if we look at our list, we saw that transparency was supported, but I don't think the cutter or the mask is supported. I'm not sure if it perceives that as a filter or effect. We'll see by testing out a flash render. So it opens your default web browser. And if we click on the play button, you'll see it supports the transparency. And in fact, it does support the cutter mask effect. Um, so I'm going to close that. And what we just saw with the previews, changing the preview resolution, this is only applicable to these type of bitmap renders. If you're doing the SWF render, it's always going to render at full size. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a second option here in the SWF export, and that's to do a report. So I'm going to click on that button. And if you, get, if you would like a report, you can see um, the file size, the number of frames that you exported, the frame range, uh, dimensions of your project, so minus 720 by 540. So like I said, you can't change that. It's always going to be 
um, at full size, uh, the ratio, the frames per second, etc. So you can see all that information if you would like by clicking on the uh, second window that appears when you do an SWF render and it just rendered again. So I'm not going to show you how to do this in Animate because it is exactly the same for both softwares Animate and Animate Pro. So that's it for the tutorial playing back effects and it's also the final video in the effects part one video tutorial series.